Pot time. Pot. Before we uh, bow our heads in a word of prayer. Good louder. <laughs> How's that? Before we bow our heads in a word of prayer, I'd like you to join me in a moment of silence as we remember those civilians, those men and women, and moms, dads, brothers, sisters, 343 firefighters, 60 police officers who died in the towers 13 years ago today. Well, welcome. Thank you for being here on this beautiful fall evening in, the, in Arlington. Uh, my name is Tom Cooper. I am the Acting Fire Chief for the City of Arlington. Um, on this day, it was a very special day for us. And, and today is about 9-11 and the events that occurred on that day. And, and we have a short program here. It's, uh, we're not going to keep you here. We want you to be able to experience this. and. Uh, we're not going to uh, recognize a lot of the dignitaries and others that are here tonight, um, although I do thank them for being here. This is truly about 9-11 and the events of that day and the steel artifact that we've all seen. Tonight, we have the responsibility and the honor of presenting this memorial dedicated in memory of those that perished at the hands of foreign terrorists on September 11th 2001. Our goal in building this memorial was simple, to assure that the events of that day and those innocent victims forever lost are never forgotten. And to pay tribute to the first responders that gave their lives so that others may live on that same day. For many of us, for many of us that terrible day seems like yesterday. The sights, the sounds, the spoken words are still vivid in our minds. Many of us can remember exactly where we were, what we are doing, when we heard that the United States had been struck by foreign terrorists. This memorial you will soon see was built with pride and determination. It wasn't without struggles. We had many of those along the way. But we overcame them. It was not just given to somebody to design and put and throw up. The, this, this team that worked together on this truly did it on the fly. We did it Arlington style. <laughs> Although constructed in city building, at a city building, taxpayers' funds did not pay for this memorial that you will soon see. They haven't been used. A significant amount of the labor and materials that you will see have been donated. A significant amount. To fund this project, we have been offering special challenge coins for purchase. There is 100, 415 of these coins that were made for each of the 343 firefighters and the 72 police officers lost that day. Each coin is very unique because on the back is inscribed the name of one of those individuals and only one coin is being made. These are for the public to purchase to support this project for the maintenance of this project and, and to finish off what we started. So when we complete, we will have coins inside the building here that are set up. If anybody would like to look, we invite you to come in. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be able to go in and see the memorial. We'll be able to step in here and uh, see the ladies if you like. Um, moving forward, the centerpiece of this memorial is really the steel artifact that we received from the World Trade Centers. Arlington being chosen for this piece was not by chance. Here today to share the story of this piece of steel and how it came to us is Public Safety Director Bruce Dedman. Please welcome him. Uh, I got a quick request. Would you guys mind switching places with us? Uh, the sun's in our eyes. <laughs> we can do that real quick. Uh, once again, my name is Bruce Stebbin. I'm the Public Safety Director for the City of Arlington, uh, which means I'm both the uh, Police Chief and oversee the Fire Chief. 
Uh, when I came here four years ago, or almost four years ago, I was aware of a program that uh, was made available to departments, cities throughout the country for pieces of memorial steel or for, uh, steel artifact for memorials. And so I decided, I went to uh, my boss and the city council and said, hey, would this be something that everyone would support? And it was a resounding absolute yes. Uh, so in April of 2011, uh, we wrote the paper, wrote the application, and in June, we got notification that we did in fact get one assigned to us, which was uh, uh, pretty exciting for us. Uh, we, uh, we were at that time, we were also building this fire station, and we had hoped to have the steel here for the September 11th, 2011 dedication. Uh, so in the contacts, in the uh, discussions with the Port Authority, they're the ones that own the steel, they said, you know, we want to walk through this paperwork, we want to get our insurance, we want to do everything we can because we want to have it here uh, September 11th. And I was told over and over and over, uh, probably not going to happen, Chief. It's just not going it, to, it's not going to happen. And uh, each time I, I got that response, I said, well, let's see if we can make it happen. You don't know the city of Arlington. You don't know Arlington firefighters. Let's do it. So I went back to our firefighters and said, listen, it appears that uh, we're going to be under an extreme time crunch. And of course, we have no money. Uh, we have no friends. Uh, let's see if we can do this. <laughs> and so I went to the union and asked, uh, asked our union president, do you think you can get some firefighters to drive back to New York and pick this thing up? Absolutely was, was the answer. So uh, in uh, early September, four of our firefighters jumped into our training truck, got a trailer that was donated from the community, went back, drove straight back to New York, and picked it up, got their dress uniforms, picked it up uh, with honor. They represented this community amazingly and uh, drove straight back. So, I mean, with that, that just, it's, it's totally impressive. So three years ago today, as a community, we came together to de dedicate this new fire station and to reflect on the tragedy that occurred 10 years prior, September 11, 2001. That day, we unveiled the 13-foot, 5,000-pound steel artifact from the World Trade Center that was awarded to Arlington to be used for a permanent memorial for public safety uh, of 343 firefighters and 72 police officers. What you see here is it is for remor memorial, so we remember, but also just as important, it's for future firefighters, future police officers to inspire them to be great. As many of you might recall, the city was notified, which I've talked about, was notified and approved uh, late in July. And so it truly was a, a, a community uh, effort to get our guys back here and then to fund this project. Over the past 13 years, there has been literally thousands of ceremonies to commemorate the 911 across the country, which appropriately focus on the loss of innocent lives, cowardice of the terrorists, the courage and bravery of those who place themselves in harm's way to serve the public. There also has been considerable discussion about how these ordinary people with ordinary lives did extraordinary things that day. The fact that you had over 400 first responders who were presumably safe at the time of the incident and made the conscious decision after responding to the incident, looking up to those towers on fire to go in and perform suppression and or rescue operations. That is truly amazing. There is no doubt in anyone's mind that they knew that this is an extremely bad situation, that people have died, people will continue to die that day, and they might be one of them. While contemplating on what I would say today, I asked myself, what would I want a speaker to say at this point if I were one of those that lost their lives? After careful consideration, and knowing that other speakers would of course talk about the courage and heroics of the day, I decided I would want to talk about their legacy, the leadership, the future. There is absolutely no doubt that there, is, there was strong leadership practice that day, and the days, the weeks, the months, and even years prior to that. Many people use the old saying, about strong leaders that they have worked for in the past. They would say, I would walk off a cliff for that guy. That guy leads from the front. With that thought, I would want our future leaders, be it the fire department, be it the police department or military, to strive to be the very best, to be the kind of leader that your crews would walk off the cliff. 
because that's what happened that day. I'd want them to be tenacious in their pursuit of self-improvement within their position. However, understand their own strengths and weaknesses and surround themselves with people that have different strengths and will complement your team. To seek and accept responsibility, but share the credit with your team. To give clarity to their crew of the, of the mission at hand and to provide the support your team needs to be successful. To know your team members and promote their safety, their safety and well-being and development. Be uncompromising in your crew's training as they, they will perform in real incidents as they train. And also, remember, train as if your life depends upon it because it does. And last but certainly not least, lead from the front. Earlier, Chief, Day, uh, Chief Cooper talked about these challenge coins. I carry two of these challenge coins with me each day in my pocket to honor the World Trade Center uh, attacks and the men and, women, men and women who lost their lives in service to others. I carry a coin with the, the New York Fire Chief's name, Peter Gancy, and as the highest ranking fire, firefighter on scene. I also carry the highest ranking police officer, Public Safety Director, Fred Maroney of the New York Port Authority Police Department. I carry them to remind me lead from the front and not to ask those that work for me to do something that I'm not willing to do. And that's what I get from this memorial, is to inspire me to be the best leader I possibly can. I would like to close with a quote from Chief Edward Croker of the New York Fire Department in 1908, speaking of the recent death of a deputy fire chief and four firefighters. In addition, I think it's important, I believe this quote can and does easily apply to our brothers and sisters in both law enforcement and military. He said, firemen are going to get killed. When they join the department, they face that fact. When a man becomes a fireman, his greatest act of bravery has been accomplished. What he does after that is all in a line of work. They were not thinking of getting killed when they went where death lurked. They went there to put out the fire and got killed. Firefighters do not regard themselves as heroes because they do what the business requires. Thank you very much.